So today I have come to the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Mistra, which is located here in the Peloponnese, about five miles from Sparta. Sparta being famous for Leonidas, and you can see Sparta here over my shoulder. And it's a great place to come. I, it's astonishing, actually. I'll show you in a minute. But I would recommend coming to Sparta in the morning, looking at the Acropolis and, and the monuments to Leonidas, his tomb, and then coming up and spending most of your time in Mistra, because this place is frankly astonishing. Anyway, we'll have a walk around. I'll try not to kill myself because it's rather hilly and I warn you it's rather hilly and we'll see what we think. So here I am at the entrance to Mistra. As I said, it's close to Sparta and it's an astonishing place. It is an abandoned medieval village built on the mountainside here, Mount Tigatos. And on the top here is a castle. That castle is a Byzantine castle and was obviously the original building here. It was built in about 1240 and the town grew up around it. And this place is a World Heritage Site, UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it was sacked by the Turkish in about 1770 because the Greeks rose up against the Turkish Ottoman uh, rule at the time. And the Archbishop here was killed and a number of the notable citizens. And they basically raised it to the ground and it was abandoned prior to its abandonment. This was the major municipal capital of Laconia, this area of the Peloponnese in Greece. And it was also a seat of incredible learning and renaissance. It was effectively the Greek Florence of its time. And after its abandonment, the population moved down to what was and is now Sparta. Although prior to that, Sparta itself had been abandoned. Unfortunately, when you explore Greece, hills are always necessary, it seems. And I would not recommend this as a place for pushchairs. I'm only just starting and I'm already out of breath. Probably says something about me more than anything. But look at the views from this place. You can just imagine, you know, these streets represent the streets of Greece 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago. These buildings, it's preserved in time and I mean, I haven't got the time that I need here, but it's beautiful. They have a lack of space, as they say. That's why it goes up the hill. And if you come here, it's very easy to get to. I have to say, you can come from Kalamata easily. You can come from Athens easily. Athens is about two hours drive. Well worth it as a day out. My God, look at this place. Well worth it as a day out. Easy to get here, a number of different roads you can take. Um, my suggestion would be take the Tripoli-Sparta road, come over the top of the Peloponnese, you go up about a thousand metres, I feel like I am now, and you explore this place. I'm here on my own. It's January, 16 degrees. It's beautiful. You can stay in Sparta if you wish. Sparta, you can see over here. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if you're coming past here for a day, we're on a day trip from Athens. This is fabulous. Combine it with Sparta and you've got one of the best unknown, unsung day trips from Athens you can possibly imagine. We're going up to that church there. That church is about halfway up the hill. And then, because I'm lazy and I'm old, I'm gonna drive up, hopefully, I'm gonna drive up to the castle there. We'll have a quick look at the castle as well. But this place had 10,000 residents and it was just completely abandoned and has remained so ever since. And it's unknown. Maybe you've heard of Mistress, maybe, but you won't know why. I didn't know why until I decided to come down to Sparta, do a video on Sparta. I would imagine in the summer, you don't want to be coming up here. If you do, bring water, wear suntan lotion. January, February, March, probably, I suspect, the very best time to come up here. I'm completely alone. The weather is great. I'm not too hot. I'm out of breath, but that's because I'm an old guy. And I'm just marveling in this place. Imagine when people lived here. They lived here for 500 years, from 1250 through to 1770. Pretty damn impressive, I have to say. Sometimes you come to something in Greece that takes your breath away. I've lived here 20 years. I had no idea this was here. It's now on my list of things to do, I tell you. 
we continue up to the church. There are two gates to this place. As I said, the entrance is six euros, but it gets you in both gates. So if you leave one, go in the other, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm going to do. There's a gate right at the bottom, down there, which is where I came in a few minutes ago. Plenty of parking, dead easy. Just drive up here, follow the sat-nav, click on the parking. Then, when you're finished here, as we will in a few minutes, you get back and you go back down, get back in your car, drive to the very top and visit the castle. You can, if you wish, walk all the way up and all the way down. But personally, I wouldn't recommend it. Just too hard. Oh, look, they've just ranged up the mountainside. It's amazing. If you want to keep on going up to the castle, you've got that path there. And it just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Even the girls on the ladies on the ticket office told me not to. They said, go up to this church, come back down, drive up. So that's what we're going to do. Ruined Byzantine church. Now, apparently, apart from the obvious, Mo Mistros is famous for the frescoes, which are painted inside these churches. And it's amazing because you can just go into them. There are a couple of places that are shut. As I said, there are nuns here. But I want to see inside this church because it's meant to be amazing. The monastery on Pantasana. Well, I can't pronounce it. Look at this. Oh, a few cats. We do get a few cats in Greece. Obviously some nuns living here in these cells. So I'm going to be very quiet and respect the peace here. Just let you have a look at the church. Yes, it's kind of mess. It's very dark in here. I hope the camera can get the frescoes. Look at this place. It smells of incense. It's long abandoned. But just astonishing. Still in use. Not abandoned. But amazing. Seven, eight hundred years of history in this building. The paintings on the wall for those who couldn't read. Depicting the scriptures and the tales that they held so close to their hearts in those days. And many just still do, to be fair. And then I imagine the terror when the Ottomans in 1770 put down an uprising here. I bet there were a few people sheltering in this church, hoping for salvation. Just amazing. So I can't actually believe I managed to get up here, but I'm now going to walk down, get in the car, take the lazy way to the top. Somehow, I suspect that going down will be easier, although maybe a little bit more precarious. It often is. And I want to see what the castle's like. This place was Frankish, I think until about 1440, 1250 to 1440. Then the Ottomans took it over. And then, as I said, in 1770, there was a rebellion and it was basically raised to the ground and abandoned. I would imagine there were some pretty nasty horrors here in 1770, which are probably not spoken about. And yes, I can confirm, going down is definitely more precarious than coming up. It feels a lot steeper going down, actually. But anyway, I shall see you at the bottom and then we'll see you at the top. So, two and a half kilometers and a bit of a stiff climb up in the car, hairpins and all. Here we are at the castle gate and I can see it's not quite what they said it was because it's not really at the top. There's still quite a bit of a climb and I've got about half an hour to get up there and back. So I am going to get a bit of a walk on and show you what's at the top. Good views as well. Just inside the castle gate now and you can see it keeps going up. I've been told go up, up, up. Just keep going straight. Panel, 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 Athea. Panel in Greek. You can see here the ruined town below, but we'll see it better from the top, I suspect. So, it's a hell of a climb, but it's a climb that just keeps on giving as well. The views from up here of the Peloponnese and the Spartan Valley are just astonishing. Pretty January day. 
Well, we're three quarters of the way there. You can see the bottom entrance for the cars. And just so you understand how far up I've come. Oh my God, what a view. Sparta there. And unfortunately, not at the top yet, but it's worth going here finally at the castle entrance. Although I'm a bit concerned because it talks about the lower castle, the middle castle, and the upper castle. So obviously three layers of defense. Here we can see two of them and more climbing. Yep, and it just keeps going. There's a third layer of defense there, some 30 or 40 foot above me. So we keep going. Interestingly enough, possible evidence of something that stood here before, Roman or Greek. I can't imagine this medieval castle was the first defensive structure. And here we are, I think at the top, down into some sort of old room, long since gone. And I shall share the view with you of the castle below, having climbed up here. It's a shame from this height, we can't see the village below, but I'll see if we can get a view before I sign off. You can see down here, the Eurotas River, the river on which Sparta over here was built. And the road from Sparta, very easy to come here. So here we are looking over Sparta. And if we look down, we can get a glimpse of the medieval village below. Hell of a place, well worth visiting, I'd come here. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. I could really do with some subscribers. I love doing these videos, but I want to pay for them. And I need a thousand subscribers to do that. So your support would be really appreciated. And I'll try and make good videos for you, I promise. So I'll sign off now with this amazing view. Thank you for watching. And I hope I can find unseen gems like this in Greece again, because it's astonishing to be honest with you.